have to tell you, I'm, I'm so happy to be sitting down with you here today for a multitude of reasons. But I think the number one reason is I'm just so happy to be celebrating you and your good health. Thank you. A little over a year ago, I know it was a, a much different story. Yes. You were hospitalized, you were suffering a number of very serious health complications. Absolutely. What happened? Well, it, it started very suddenly. I, I was doing very well and then I just started collapsing and lost my ability to walk. And I think I spent about nine months in the hospital. They could not put their finger on what it was. They diagnosed me with a multitude of things. First Guillain-Barre, then it was uh, so many different things. And the emotional roller coaster of being told that, oh, you may have blood cancer or you may have Guillain-Barre, like so many things. So I finally got to the point where I was like, I have to take my health into my own hands. So I put myself in a wheelchair and I wheeled myself out of the hospital. I cannot believe that you busted yourself out of the hospital. Tell me, <laughs> how did that all work? Was it just as simple as I'm ripping these cords out and I'm getting out of here? It really was that simple. I, I had been thinking about the fact that I wasn't seeing any progression. I wasn't feeling better and I was just feeling stagnant and they were just testing me and taking blood and I just felt terrible. And I think a lot of it, the emotional aspect of being you know, sequestered and nobody's coming to see you and just not knowing what's going on around you, I just decided like good or bad, I'm getting out of here and I'm gonna like go at it holistically. And um, since I did that, I, have regained my ability of, to walk. And um, one of my major issues was the loss of memory. I was having a lot of memory issues and um, I, I lost years and years and years of my life. So I started going to a cognitive therapist that puts you through puzzles and all these things and everything just started reconnecting and I do hyperbaric chambers and I do NAD treatments, all holistic, and it's worked. I understand that you were told you had six months to a year to live. Yes. Did you ever actually believe that? I think when I was first told that I didn't have very long to live, I, I, to be honest, I think I just walled up. I didn't really know how, how to digest that. So I took myself out of the situation and I said, I'm not gonna let this happen. I, I, I refuse, I'm not gonna go down like that. Mm -hmm. So I ended up uh, just taking everything into my own hands and making it happen. I knew that I still had so much life left to live. And now I just, I finally feel like sunshine again. The smile on your face really tells me everything. You have so much life in your eyes. Yeah. Do you feel back to 100%? I don't think I'm at 100%. I think I'm running at about 75, 78%. I'll take it. I'll take it. So, I mean, coming from a 10%, yeah. I'm feeling really good. Um, I'm training every other day. I'm eating perfectly. Oh. And it's, it's just like, and I also have a great partner. I, I'm married and I'm just really happy. You recently opened up on Instagram about this health journey that you're on. A lot of people are addressing my weight loss. I'm just minding my health. Um, I am back keto and I'm doing a little bit of intermittent fasting. How's the whole regimen going? Well, I think that when it comes to diets, they think keto is a fad diet, but if you really look into like how it makes you feel, because everybody's different. Keto might make some people feel bad, but for me, I feel myself coming back to life when I eat correctly. And intermittent fasting, for me, what it does is it kind of resets my metabolism. You know, coming out of the hospital and being on so many medications that they had me on, once I got out, I started intermittent fasting and it reset me and I felt my, like all my nerve endings starting to fire again. I think it's an important message to, to people everywhere that sometimes you have to take your health into your own hands and just do what feels right to you because doctors don't know everything. 
you know, so follow your heart. Happy early 50th. Thank you. I can't believe I made it to half a century. Oh, I can. You're the epitome <laughs> of resilience. Are you kidding That's me? That's for sure. I'm a bounce back queen. You are. Yeah. And with a big milestone birthday, is there one goal that you have for yourself personally and one goal you have for yourself professionally? Well, I just want to continue being happy. You know, that's the most important to me because when I'm settled inside, then I'm able to push that out to everybody in my life. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, obviously me and my wife, we were thinking about um, what can we do that's like really crazy and special. And I'm like, I've always wanted to go on the Orient Express. Oh, wow. So I feel like that's going to be what we're going to do. Bucket and take list. like a, a month-long trip, oh, train trip. You deserve it. Wow. Okay, that's a pretty iconic way to ring in 50. That's what I'm talking about. It's been 15 years since you retired from the world of adult yeah. films. Mm -hmm. Are you retired for good or would you ever consider a return? <laughs> I could not imagine ever doing adult movies again. Okay. I, I really ran my course and, and it was such a beautiful trip that I wouldn't want to mess it up by trying to make a comeback. Plus, you know, I'm grown. When all is said and done, mm -hmm. what do you hope your legacy is? I want to be remembered as a fighter. I want to be remembered as a woman that played the game by her own rules and kicked ass. That's the most important to me. Mm -hmm. You know, no matter what was ever thrown at me, I hit it out of the stadium. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I'm on my comeback, my 10th comeback. But that's it, that's the whole point, right? Yeah. Is that you can have a million comebacks as long as you come back happier, exactly. healthier than ever. What do you think you're gonna be most proud of at the end of the day? Listen, I, I am absolutely 100%, no doubt, the most proud of my children. My children are beautiful, smart, and well-adjusted, and funny, you know? I'm, I'm just really proud that I was able to give birth to three beautiful humans. So that, to me, is my legacy. What do they make of your life? My kids, they don't see me as Jenna Jameson. They just see me as their weird mom. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I make school lunches and I drive them back and forth to school and all those kind of things. So I'm very normal on the, on the day to day. No makeup, no nothing. So, yeah. what what does Jesse make of your past? Was she a fan? <laughs> yes, Jesse was a fan. I guess her best friend growing up had a huge poster of me on her wall. So. Yeah, she was very well aware of me and my lifestyle. She manifested you yeah, in, in, I a, think in a weird way. Yeah. I think she did. She she doesn't really believe in the whole manifestation thing, but I am a big me believer too. in it. And now she's like starting to like understand how that kind of stuff works. You put you focus your power and it happens. And look, we're married and super happy. And it it's funny because every once in a while she'll look at me and be like, I can't believe I married Jenna Jameson. 